Welcome back, all my 40K fanatics out there. I'm DJ, joined once again by my buddy Lane for another competitive Warhammer game. Today we are going to be practicing, well, pseudo-practicing. I'm bringing a list up, and Lane's got his list that he's going to be running this weekend in Cincinnati. Yeah, going to the CAG Bash GT in Cincinnati. They got around 55 players signed up so far, so it should be a good time. Lots of people there. I'm really excited to take the dev watch and really try them out on, on a bigger uh, arena. So that's what I'm looking forward to, and DJ's been helping me practice and get ready for that. Yep, and today I'm going to be running Necrons for that reason. Initially, I was I told Lane before we talked about doing this practice game, he did request for me to play Necrons so he can get some practice into them before going to the event. Um, I asked him which detachment he said he was open to any detachment. And originally, I had all aspects of bringing Kanat to court because mm -hmm. that's my favorite detachment out of it. I like it more than Hypercrypt. If I was taking Necrons to a tournament, that would be the detachment I'd take. However, after playing Tyranids and playing against Brian, I had a lot of fun with the Phalanx. Mm -hmm. It is a very, very fun unit army to play. And it does base a lot around, in my opinion, my list does, on the movement characteristics and movement abilities that I can do with some of the units, mm -hmm. i.e. mortals. Uh, you know, it does play on the buffs of Zerus, which we've seen time and time again. Those are really, really strong buffs. Uh, he's not standing back up this time, so you only have to kill him once. Only once, yeah. Wait, four up involved, four up feel no pain? Hey, it, it's semantics. <sighs> semantics, my friend. But... There, it also has that weird space marine aspect of I pick a unit and that unit I can hit a little harder mm -hmm. where I get plus one to wound against it. Yeah. Uh, so not very CP reliant. I'm actually going to be doing fixed uh, secondaries mm -hmm. for this one. So that's going to be interesting. Now, again, back to when I played against Brian, I saw some resilience. I saw some hope. I saw some possibilities. So I cut some of the fat out of that list, put in some of the powerhouse secondary styled units, Mixed it all together, cooked for, cooked on 480 for 30 minutes, and I got myself an army. All right. So with that being said, though, Lane, first let's talk about your army that you're going to be bringing uh, this weekend and today. Let's do it. All right. This is the Death Watch Black Spear Task Force. Uh, so Death Watch, Death Watch. We have three characters today. We have a Phobos captain, because he may or may not join uh, some infiltrators. A Phobos captain, and he has the enhancement Tome of Ectoclades. We have an apothecary Biologus, who will be joining a six-man Eradicator squad. He has the Beacon and Jealous. Uh, uh, enhancements. Then, of course, we have the Calidus Assassin for her uppy downy uh, shenanigans. Then we have one uh, five man squad of infiltrators to block out deep strikes. Uh, DJ didn't bring any deep striking today. So, of all the armies that DJ plays, he decided to play one that does not deep strike on the day I bring the infiltrator deep strike denies. So we have three squads of Death Watch Terminators, you know, three assault cannons in each of these squads, and then we have uh, six-man Brick of Eradicators, two three-man Bricks of Eradicators, two Repulsor Executioners with the Heavy Laser Destroyers, and two uh, Invader ATVs with the Onslaught Galley Cannons. DJ, what are you bringing today? All right, here is the Necron. Obeisance. Phalanx Enclave, or I like to colorfully call the Nope List. So with the Nope... I am bringing today two Triarch Stalkers, Convergence of Dominion, and the Canoptic Reanimator. The Canoptic Reanimator is one that, talking with a couple people, is back on the rise. Even though it's a three-inch range, that ability still is very, very strong, especially going into things like, with things like Immortals. Triarch Stalkers can knock away cover. Convergence gives me a feel-no-pain, since I'm not taking any Technomancers in this list. Now, as for the Immortals, we got 30 of them. Two are Tesla, one is Gauze. The Gauze is going to have a Plasmancer, two Crypt Thralls, and a Foot Lord with them. The, uh, Chrono the Chronomancers are going to be with both of the Tesla squads, as well as the Translocating Overlord with both the Tesla because of the Tesla's Assault Weaponry. Then we have Zerus. Zerus provides a lot of boost to battle line units, giving them plus one AP, as well as reducing AP by one. If they're within three inches, if Zerus punks someone in combat, just a model, he can increase that by three inches. So he can get a lot of range if he is getting up and getting in the mix with them. Uh, then we have, as far as secondaries, I have two squads uh, to do this with. I have one Tomb Blades and one squad of Flayed ones to get out there early. And last, surely not least, we will be bringing a 10-man Brick of Lich Guard with an Overlord on foot. That's going to give them minus one to hit 
as their enhancements. Okay, really? I can just say it. I'm right here. You don't have to use recording. No, 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 no. No, when we're talking about the Necrons, Obeisance, Phalanx, Enclave, we're going to use the clip. I'm definitely going to use it. I feel like I should get royalties from that. Maybe, but speaking of royal, look, Inga okay. dice. That was a stretch. Go. Let's decide who's going to go. Even. Oh, oh, and you got the even. All right. So you will be able to choose. Now, typically, again, you would get to pick your deployment side. But we play on uh, pre-placed Games Workshop style terrain. Most of the events we go to also have predetermined table terrain. So because of that, it doesn't matter as much. And it's just a matter of if you want to deploy first or second. I do want to deploy first because I'm going to use my infiltrators to block out your infiltrators. That was going to be my next question. I was going yep. to say, okay, and so, why? Because I knew that, that was, uh, that's mm -hmm. an important thing with this. Most of the times we just immediately go, oh, I want my opponent to deploy first, you know, and have that set up. But like you said, with the infiltrators, you can cover two thirds of no man's land where before I can eat, and I can only cover a third, if you yeah. wanted to dedicate that heavy with it. Right, and because I have the Phobos Captain, I can redeploy them too. Mm -hmm. So if I want to, after the roll off, the CEO goes first. If I want to pull them back, I can. If not, I can leave them out there. So. Exactly, exactly. So that's going to be, an, that's an important part right now with this aspect that I don't think we talk about enough, so I want to take a second for that. Mm -hmm. The second's up, time to deploy, and we'll be back after deployment. All right, we are deployed. So... First things first, I just want to say I am playing fixed, and at this point in the game, I reveal to my opponent that I will be doing cleanse, as well as storm hostile objectives as my fixed secondaries. So, Lane, why don't you talk about what we are playing today? So, today we are doing a mission that will be at the CAG Bash at GT in Cincinnati that I'm going to this weekend. So, um, the deployment is search and destroy, so table quarters. Uh, and then the mission is Supply Drop. This is the Alpha and Omega one, where in turn four, one of the objectives disappears, and in turn five, one of the objectives, another one disappears. Uh, in turns two and three, each objective in No Man's Land is worth five points. Your deployment of zone one is worth nothing in terms of primaries. In turn four, each uh, No Man's Land objective is worth eight, and in turn five, uh, the remaining No Man's Land objective is worth 15. All and right. Chilling Rain is our mission rule, so no, oh, yeah. no mission rule. Yeah, no special mission rule for that one. We thought about throwing something else in there just because of the content, but Lane is practicing, so Chilling Rain it is, as that's going to be what's seen in tournament. So no special rule. Let's talk about deployments. So uh, Lane made a comment on a very unique deployment for me. I have a building, and yet hardly anyone inside. The only reason that there's even guys in there is because I don't have more room in the front of my deployment. So we have the Triarch Stalker set up over here. They have an 8-inch scout move. So depending on if I go first or second, I can kind of move them out of, out of immediate harm's way and get them in a better position so they don't get hit by, oh, you know, big stupid tanks. Big smart tanks. They're smart. I've still yet to hear for, back from AT&T if they cover smart tanks. So I, I'll believe it when I see it on my next bill. Over here, we have the Tomb Blades ready to scout out 8 inches and take the be in range for the objective or duck back behind the wall in case we don't go first. And then we have just big horde of guys getting ready to move out and get to play the game as we need fit. I did put the gauze in front since they are the slower moving one of the immortals as the other two squads of immortals have chronomancer and translocation orb to be able to get around the field quicker. And then the convergence is buried in there all up in the front. All right, going across the field. Here we go with the Dev Watch. Well, we've got some brave little boys out in the no man's land because we've got the infiltrators and the Phobos Captain out here. I placed them out here just so I could block out uh, DJ's uh, infiltrating units because the Phobos Captain allows me to redeploy up to three Phobos units or scout units uh, before the game starts, after we determine the roll off. So um, the Captain will definitely be running away because he's my Tome enhancement model and I need him to survive until I can pop off the Tome. So, As Lane would say, I uh, would. Uh, depending on, the, um, depending on um, who goes first, I might keep the infiltrators out there. I don't need them in my back uh, deployment zone for blocking out deep strikes, so they may just be out there as a speed bump or to score an objective. Um, and then the rest, uh, we've got two ATVs positioned to kind of zoom out as needed, and then we have the two um, repulsor executioners on the table. Calidus is hanging out on the objective here. 
And then we've got three squads of Terminators and the six man Eradicator squad all in Deep Strike. All right. So now we all that's left to see who goes first. Lane, you are also playing tactical. You'll be drawing cards, right? I sure will. All right. So, Lane, how, in this situation, what do you feel? Would you prefer to go first or second? Either one is really fine. Uh, I have things to shoot at if I go first. And if you go first, then you'll give me more things to shoot at. This is true. I kind of would want to play off first, uh, more so so I can get into better positions. But I'm defensively, I'm okay if I go second. So, all right. Let's let the dice decide. And Lane will be going first with the five. I'll be going first. These are my teleport homers that I always forget about, so I put them here to remember. I'm going to place yeah. those, do some redeploys, and then we'll be back with turn one. All right. Yep, we got redeploys and scouts, and we'll be back. We'll talk about those real fast. Okay, real quick. So what we did here, uh, Lane put down. I'm just going to scan across the board. Lane put down a teleport homer here. I moved a Triarch Stalker in better position to avoid both eradicators so that the eradicators really can't get a line of sight on him from either side of the building. Uh, the infiltrators fell back from the center objective, just a little bit more behind the wall. Very well, we're is it, it, they were picked up and redeployed, right? Yeah, they were okay. redeployed. So that, yeah, that's how that worked. The Phobos captain went where? Oh, he went back to home, didn't he? Away! Okay, he went back to the home field Back objective. to the deployment zone, because he needs to survive until turn whatever I pop off my tome. Then we got a teleport homer down over here. Mm -hmm. And then the two blades moved up, scouting forward. And uh, this Triarch over here, the last one, he moved into the middle, so he's able to push on center. Yes, he can get hit by an Eradicator. I will get cover for him uh, in some way, shape, or form. And I'm just going to kind of hopefully just try and push and test the test its LAS cannon. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to gamble against it if it wants to hit me. So, all right, that's it for me. Let's We're going to kick it over to Lane in his first movement phase. Okay, so my secondaries are Investigate Signals and Deploy Teleport Homers. Uh, after moving my brave little infiltrators back away from the objective, I moved them back towards it. Now, because DJ took uh, Storm Hostile Objectives, um, Deploy Teleport Homers, I just have to be within six inches of the center, so I'm not on the objective with anybody. Um, the infiltrators are just going to do the action there. The tank moved up. The infiltrators got or the eradicators got out, so we can do some zip and zap on that guy. And then that's really all the action there is. Um, this uh, uh, repulsor advanced onto the objective. He's OC five. Those little guys back there um, are OC are a total of OC five. So we are tied on the objective. And that's it. So I'm gonna do some blasting. Let's do some zapping. That is my oath target, uh, the Triarch Stalker. So uh, we'll see what happens. Go, Space Marines, go. Managed to zap the Triarch Stalker there. Um, the Eradicator's gone out to do it. So obviously, this put them at risk. DJ has a lot of shooting and stuff. But there aren't that many vehicles in his list. So expending them by getting them out there um, to do some damage to a vehicle made sense to me. Because if I lose them, it's not that big a deal. I have plenty of assets that will pop the remaining vehicles. It's more his infantry that I'm worried about chewing through. So uh, I was okay with getting the eradicators out. So between them and the tank, they were able to pick up the stalker. Uh, score five on secondaries, two for investigate signals, uh, thanks to the Lady Calutus, and then three for deploy teleport homers in the middle of the table. On to DJ's turn. All right. So over to the Necrons, the secondaries I drew were cleanse and uh, storm hostile. <laughs> you forgot. I did. I did forget. Storm hostile objectives. So, uh, Storm Hostel will be the most difficult one, as we have a full, full health tank hanging out over here. Now, the positive part of this with the full health tank is, I have Triarch Stalker with a Melta weapon. So, I made him my target for plus one to wound. Uh, it's going to be a gamble to see. But then we can also charge the little flayed ones from the other side of the wall and try and do some damage in there. Over here in the middle, Lane decided to overwatch the Canoptic Do uh, Doomstalker Reanimator. I know my units. The Canoptic Reanimator dropping it down to three wounds off the Eradicators, and then everyone else just came rushing in the middle. Lich Guard advanced. Technically, the uh, Immortals did too. These Immortals moved out, and they're going to shoot over at the Eradicators, hopefully try and pick them up this turn. And uh, Tomb Blades moved over in the corner, and now they're going to cleanse that objective. And the reanimator is cleansing over here. Immortals in the back zoned out, 
to prevent some deep strikes on turn two. And I really didn't need them for anything this turn. So I just said, okay, you guys are just going to hang out back there and I'll use you later in the game. All right. So that's it. Let's uh, do some shooting. All right. So i uh, going to throw some dice rolls in this. We're going to do these here locusts, or if locusts, these here immortals are going to shoot their gauze blasters going into this squad of eradicators. So unfortunately, my, uh, my triarch's not there anymore. So that means no, uh, I can't remove the cover. So they're going to get a cover save. I have Zerus nearby, so at least I will be AP2. Uh, so we'll be putting them on four ups. And yeah, that's pretty much it, as well as the Plasmancer in all his glory. So, uh, let's go ahead and do the Plasmancer first. So he has, his ability, one of them, is, well, is to hit a unit on a four up and do, or I'm sorry, four dice, four ups, do mortal wounds. So let's start with those. All right, so we got one mortal wound out of that. Is he in range for that? Uh, 18 inches. Okay. Yeah. All right, so now we're going to move over to... The actual, we'll do his Plasma Lance first to finish. So he's got three shots with this. He's going to be hitting on fours. You're not on an objective, so I don't get to re-roll. But I hit you twice. Hey, look at that. Uh, strength is seven. So I got one wound. It is AP three for two damage. All right, that's going to go through. So that'll finish off the guy that I zappied. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we'll do the Immortals. So the Immortals have lethal. Unfortunately, no rerolls at this time, but we will crit on five ups because of the Plasmancer. So we're looking for uh, threes. Fives up are better. I'll pull out your successful five ups. That's a lot. I got all the garbage, all the misses. Oh, wow. How many did I get out of that? So you got nine uh, successful lethal hits. So all right, that's a good start. And then uh, strength five going into T six. So I need fives, but I get reroll ones. So I'm an immortal. One. Ooh. Okay. So we got nine. You said before. Yep. So a total of eleven saves for me. These are AP two. AP two. But you do get cover, so that's going to put you at AP one. Uh, so I'm looking for four ups. One, two, three. Did yeah, I they're dead. Yeah. I got them. Yay! I think maybe one extra wound in there. Nice, nice. Good job, guys. Okay, so good news and bad news. Good news. As you guys seen, the, we were able to pick up the Eradicators nicely. My Tesla Immortal shot and then fanned out, doing two damage with their, with their uh, Tesla. Because, you know, Tesla doesn't do that against vehicles. So wasn't expecting much out of them, but I'm glad to pick on them. Uh, and then over here, we failed to hit wound and do damage with the Triarch Stalker. So now we're going to charge, and hopefully we can stick this charge so we can flip that objective. That's going to be about it. Hooray! The Triarch charge, and the, he made it in. So the Triarch was able to give us the OC value that we needed to take this objective away, and combined with the Flayed Ones charging in as well. And we tank shocked for one damage. And then the flayed ones put three wounds on it. Trier could not, you know, he's not really that great in combat, but the flayed ones with their twin linked and sustained were able to put three damage onto the big tank. Here we go. All right, so that's gonna end my turn. I was able to get a four for Storm Hostile on that objective. And then I cleansed the other two with the Tomb Blades and the Reanimator. So that's gonna be it. Let's pass it over to Death Watch and Death Watch turn two. All right, my kiddos, this is the turn. But before we start the turn, for those of us just tuning in, one thing Lane and I forgot to mention. Since this is the one they referred to as Alpha and Omega, objective markers will be disappearing in this game. The objective markers that will be disappearing is number three will be disappearing first. And then over here, number four in the corner will be disappearing, which means at the end of the game, we will be fighting over the center objective. Back to you, Lane. Thank you, DJ. Um, so, uh, this, this is the go hot turn. This is what you're all here for. If you're here for watching dev watch do their thing. So we pop the Tome of Exoclades because, oh, I should mention my secondaries are area denial and cleanse. I'm not going to be able to cleanse, but I'm going to try to score area denial by killing everything in the middle of the board. So that means I am going to try to kill, um, the uh, reanimator, uh, the immortals and the characters attached hither. And then of course, 
Also, uh, the Lich Guard. Uh, no small feat, but we popped the Tome of Ectoclades on both of these units. I'll be reviewing all hits and wounds into both of them. We are also popping Sustained this turn. I believe that's Fuhrer Tactics, so we will be furiously sustaining on all shots, and we've got a bunch of Dev Wound stuff that'll cut right through any kind of saves. And we also, so we brought in Terminators over here, Get eyes downtown into the uh, immortals. We brought in eradicators to pop this stupid spider stalker thing. Uh, the tank stayed right here, so he can keep shooting. It's not a spider; it only has six legs. Um, and then uh, ATV moved up. Eradicators got out of the repulsor, so they can hopefully cook uh, this guy. And then uh, more terminators deep struck here, so they can shoot downtown. Uh, to be careful that DJ doesn't pull things. Uh, I left. I made sure I had eyes on the characters in the units. So even if he pulls models, um, the infantry, like the immortals and um, uh, the lich guard, I still have most of my targets pointing at the characters parts of those units. So he won't be able to pull those first. So I'll be able to get most of my shots into these. Uh, it'll be tricky. I'm probably better off into the immortals or into the lich guard. Because the Immortals, I do have to kill the squad and both characters attached to it. So, uh, I'm going to do a whole lot of blasting, and hopefully it kills everything I see. All right, I'll be back in a minute. I went big, and we got there. Era Denial was the name of the game. We hosed the Lich Guard, the Immortals, and the Chicken Guys attached to the Immortals. And the two characters attached to the Immortals. So the only survivor of all this mayhem was this character who was attached to the Lich Guard, but he is outside of six. So it still uh, gets me area denial because all these guys are within six inches of the center. Now, uh, very successful in the mid, the midnight, the midden objective, less successful into the spider, the eradicators. Yeah, they were neg one to hit because I didn't fall to move the tank back. So it did do some work into him. He's down to four wounds, but he's still there. And DJ has a magical strat that can bump up his uh, OC by three. So we're just going to see if we can charge like all sorts of stuff onto this and uh, see if we can hold it. So uh, make a couple charges here, and then we'll be back. It was an eventful charge phase, guys. So my Calidus had snuck in back here. And she made her nine inch charge into the two blades that used to be there. And she wrecked them good because uh, in her combat attack, she is AP four so, and two damage. So she did pick up all three and scooched onto the objective, which I guess is bad because he's going to storm that hostile objective. Oh, well. Uh, and then the Terminators made their nine inch charge in here. Uh, it didn't swing very good because these guys, these mortals are neg one to hit. And uh, the Thunder Hammers then are only hit on fives, Power Fist on fours. Not my oath target, so I only ended up killing one of these guys. I guess what's going to happen? He's going to pop right back. But um, kind of limits. Can they fall back and shoot or fall back or anything? No, no, no. no. Yeah, so they're kind of stuck there with me for a turn or two, and then just not a whole lot going on here. The spider did stab one of my uh, eradicators to death. Um. Uh. So right now. I am OC four to your N two, so I'm six. Yeah, and you're at eight. I'm at five, six, six seven, seven eight. eight. Yeah, but DJ can pop. I need to pass a battle shock. I need to pass and then two I can, battle shocks, and then I can spend a command point and give myself plus three during the command phase and yeah. seal that objective. Yep. <clears throat> All right, over to me. Over to DJ's turn. Oh, uh, one of my secondaries. Oh, just area denial. That's all we got. Uh, we didn't cleanse anywhere because we were too busy killing. All right, after a grueling turn that I lost two big units, uh, we did pass both of our battle shocks, and we spent the command point to give us a boost to our, C our uh, um, OC value. So now we control this objective, and uh, that gave us five, was it? Five, five on secondary or primary? Yeah, because yeah, you so. didn't hold this one or no. that one. You just, okay. Yeah, so five on primary. All right, so now we have cleanse and storm hostile. So right now, as long as we continue with this pace, we take this objective, and that's already an easy storm. But just in case, we're also over here, moved over so we can charge with the immortals and everything and try and take the Calidus out. Even if we don't take the Calidus out, we'll still at least take the objective marker. Xerus is cleansing, but that is an option. I can un I can decide to charge with him if I like fail with the immortals or something. The Overlord over here is also cleansing. Again, I can choose to opt out and charge if things go rough. 
And over here, the flayed ones are also charging. Same deal, same concept. They're, they're cleansing. Cleansing. Yeah. Cleansing. Not charging yet. Over here with the Immortals, we actually stayed in combat, reanimated the one guy back, gave these guys the plus one to wound on them, and we're going to see if we can't do a little more damage in the fight phase. All right. Time to do some shooting. Okay. So the Triarch Stalker, unfortunately, did miss. Uh, really hit, but then you failed the wound. And then over here, the Immortals did a good job of picking up the Infiltrators in the middle. So at least those guys are out of the way. And now we are going to do some charging. So uh, final determination, I'm going to leave the Flayed Ones and hope that everything works well and we, if this happens has, uh, as it should. And probably leaving Zerus as long as the Immortals make their charge. And we're going to bring the Overlord into the center as long as everything goes, or into that bike as long as everything goes well. All right. Time to charge. Okay, okay, not so bad. Not so bad of a way to finish up. So the Stalker lived. He's got two wounds left, and that's probably going to be the last time I say that for this game. Blade Ones were able to successfully cleanse this objective because we still control it. And since we took that objective and flipped it this turn, it was one that at the beginning of the turn we did not control, that we didn't control it until the end of our command phase. We score that uh, for overwhelming for or storm hostile objectives. And if that doesn't work out that way, we did also smash the Calidus into the ground, Hulk smash style with the Immortals. And uh, yeah, so we, we stormed that hostile objective. Zerus cleansed over there. The Flayed Ones cleansed. And my Overlord rushed in the middle. He took some damage uh, and beat up on the this little bike a little bit. Let's try and clog the pathway. Then over here, there's no more Terminators. Giving them plus one damage or plus one to wound was a nice and easy way to be able to pick up those uh, Terminators and get them out of my backfield. So that's going to be it. I did get an 8 on secondaries again, so yay me, but uh, uh, we'll see how this plays out. Lane is going to be picking up one of his squads of Terminators, and we'll go back uh, after the death, uh, to the Dev Watch turn. Choose my Oath of Moment target this turn. I got uh, my secondaries are great. Secure No Man's Land and Extend Battle Lines. Perfect. I should score 10 for those. Uh, I did not score any primaries. Uh, so that's been tricky. I ended up Oath of Momenting Saris, even though I'm not going to shoot him this turn. Um, I could have Oath of Momenting these guys and put some shots into him, but then he has a res orb, so he just res them back and get them closer to me, which I didn't want. Stay over there, boys. So I Oath of Momenting him, Saris, so if he gets close to me uh, in his turn, I can Overwatch and... Um, being Oath, I'll get to re-roll everything. And I chose Lethal Hits this turn, too, so I'll get to re-roll. Well, all my sixes just automatically wound, so... Yeah, we'll see if it's worth it. Um, anyways, Deep Strike the Terminator's here. Eradicator scooched up a little bit, so if those Immortals come out, at least I'll get some cover on these guys. And that's it. We're going to start blasting. Blast away. Pew, 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 pew. Eradicator's picked up the Stalker. Uh, and then the uh, tank, the repulsor is free to shoot away, fire away, and picked up the um, skinning, the guys with the skin on them, flayed ones. And then this repulsor with its big laser cannon picked up the character that was there. That was really it. No charges, um, no other targets to shoot at. Uh, so DJ's left with this big squad of immortals, Zerus, and that big squad of immortals over there. I scored 10 on my secondaries, which is great, but I haven't been scoring any primaries, which I hear is how you win Warhammer. Excuse me. Excuse me, Lane. The disrespect. Oh, you know what? I disrespected the convergence of Dominion, and nice. for my crimes, I will uh, I'll have to make sure I kill him. Um, so, yeah. I'll have to make sure he dies, too. Anyways, that's it for my turn three. On to DJ's turn three. All right, so as far as secondaries are concerned, we're not going to be cleansing anything this round since I lost everything over on this flank. And I need to move out of middle, move towards middle, because this objective marker is about to vanish. So instead, we are going to move into center and start focusing on center. So these immortals advanced up. They're going to be able to shoot at the unit that I marked for plus one to wound. And then they will uh, move on to the objective. Then over here, the Immortals moved up, so they have an 8-inch charge on this bike afterwards, so I can pull them a little bit further, and they'll probably shoot at something over there. Maybe the Terminators, maybe the tank. I don't know if they can see the tank, actually. but Or maybe that little bike in the middle just to remove it. Who knows? The, the, my, the world is my oyster. All right, time to shoot. 
All right, so for the turn, we were able to successfully uh, beat up these Terminators. Not kill them, just beat them up. Uh, lane popped Armor of Contempt to reduce Zerus' little AP threshold that he had uh, to help out the Immortals. And then we used the Chronomancer's move buff to move and take the center objective. So now we stormed the hostile objective. These Immortals shot and they were able to hurt the Terminators and then finish off that little bike over here with the help of the Plasmancer. And then they charged and finished off another bike. They're not liking bikes this turn. They have this massive ATV hatred. And then they piled into the tank just to kind of move block and do some stuff there since center objective is so, so valuable. And that is going to be it. So we will get the four for Storm Hostile, but I don't think we're going to be able to cleanse very much now. And uh, we'll shoot this over to Lane and his top of turn four. Yep, top of turn four. Top of Oh, this is where it's all going to happen, right up here in the middle of the board. So I did Oath of Moment, the Silver Immortals. They're still engaged with the tank here. And then uh, these guys I'm just going to try to shoot at, so I just kind of positioned everyone around to shoot. I failed the Uppy Downy. I didn't want to keep my Terminators where they were so they could make charges. I forgot I could have Uppy Downy my Captain because I don't need to hold my home field objective because I pulled Capture Enemy Out goes and engage on all fronts. That would have given me 11 points this turn if I had if I had up and down my captain and because I could have dropped it on DJ's home field objective. So that's a bummer. Um, so it's going to be a zero on primary or secondary this turn. Did you mention I overwatched? You overwatched? Up, yeah, I overwatched with the Immortals and was able to pick up some of the Terminators. A, a Terminator. A Terminator. Yeah. Did some damage. Did four wounds because they were Teslas, so you got five sixes, so it's 15 hits and these were all wounds. So yeah, Love it. Regular shenanigans. Uh, all right, shoot a clock. Well, it literally took all the shooting we had, but we picked up these Immortals. Now, they weren't my Oath target, and I forgot that they're never one to hit. Because just the, <laughs> this army has oh, all the answer. rules. Um, yeah, DJ can tell me what it is how many, many times it wants, but yeah. So, uh, but we did pick up the, it came down to the last shot from the big smart laser that picked up the last Immortal. So, because he's got, it's big because he's got the Resurrection Orb. That's the one thing I do remember at the end of any phase. He can pop that and just reanimate how many? D6. Yeah, but they're one wood a piece, so you could bring back six, six if you rolled hot. So I don't want that to happen. So next, we're going to charge. These are the ones who are um, uh, beothed. So we're going to charge them with Terminators and Terminators and hopefully wreck through those guys. Um, yeah, that's what's going to happen. Let's do it. Okay, a lot of fighting happened. DJ did manage to pick up two Terminators from that squad and one from this squad. Uh, I did not kill very many Immortals because he's got Armor of Contempt and all the shenanigans. So um, he did take this objective. He did pop his Res Orb, so that's done here. Um, but he only rolled a 1. So he did bring back 1, but he does take the objective. So he scores primary, but that also stiffs him on Storm Hostile objective on his turn because he won't. He already owns it, so he can't. Uh, you'd have to take that one in order to take it or take this one. And I don't think you can do either of those things. So challenge accepted. No, uh, I really can't. I really challenge can't. issued. Uh, unfortunately for me, I did neither engage nor uh, capture enemy outpost. What I think I will do is keep capture enemy outpost, which forces DJ to make some decisions. All right. So I'm not going to be able to storm hostile objectives. There's no way for me to get over and take this one. And I have no way of getting in there and taking that one. So, we are just going to be happy that we control this. We scored some primary, and we're going to cleanse the objective with the Chronomancer. Uh, I took the, since Lane is telegraphing that he's got a big eight command point, I brought my translocation overlord back here and said, come get some. If he wants to go in there. He wants to land a charge to take that objective. I'm ready. I'll be more than happy to fight with you. Zerus moved up and got overwatched by a big stupid tank. And uh, yeah, he's going to do some fighting as well, too. So. All right, let's do this. Time to do some shooting. Okay, so combining the shooting and the fight phase, because it all kind of happened at once, uh, shooting-wise, nothing really happened. I had uh, Zerus shot the tank, and he failed. Then we charged in, Zerus charged, and I think he did like one damage to the tank, maybe two. But the bigger, more important was the Immortals picked up all of the Terminators, so now we happily control center of objective, for this time frame. All right, uh, that's going to be it. I will only get two points for uh, my secondaries because the only thing I could do is cleanse, and I already controlled that objective marker at the beginning of the turn. 
All right, over to the Death Watch. All right, I kept uh, capture enemy outposts. I pulled behind enemy lines, making it even more difficult because basically I added up the math. I basically have to kill this DJ office and prevent him from taking it in his turn, which is going to be extremely difficult. It's going to rely on some long bomb charges and guns going just right. But uh, here we go. We're going to throw some dice. Oh, these guys came back down. Yeah, Eradicators picked up and came back down. I'll be down here. Uh, this tank had to fall back so other people could shoot at these guys in the middle here. So uh, we'll see. It's, I don't think it's going to be real successful. But um, on to my shooting. Well, we wiped the squad here. Uh, it doesn't really matter because we failed to sh make the charge with these guys in here. So DJ is going to outscore me. Another very low scoring game here. But we'll let DJ finish out his t turn and see what he can score. And then uh, that'll be game. All right, and that is the game. Over here, the Necrons just took a knee. We didn't have to do any shooting, no damage, no charges, nothing. Make it nice and easy. So we moved. Uh, we didn't control the objective at the beginning of the turn because the tank was OC5. We had the Plasmancer in combat and the Chronomancer, so we only had OC2, and then brought Zerus and the Overlord over. Overlord got tank um, Overwatch. Overlord got Overwatch. Gee, that's fun. And not enough damage. The big stupid lasers didn't hit. That was what Lane was hoping for to try and zap him to make it that I would have had to take out the tank or something silly to uh, take the objective. But we were did not need to. Simply moved over here, flipped the objective for four points, and then took that center objective. So it is a final score. Necrons, 69 to a Death Watch, 38. All right, guys, stay tuned for the post game, and we'll uh, check you out over there.